I mean, one of the beautiful things about Göttingen is that it has statues of its physicists, not of its generals. There's no, there's no army people type dotted around it. It's all the scientists. So you're just walking down the street and you walk past the statue of, of Carl Gauss, who's one of the great savants of, of ever. And, and actually, my walk to work in the morning took me right past his tomb. And some days, if I was stuck on a particular problem, I would sit down at the foot of his tomb and I would describe to Gauss, you know, what I'm doing. I'm doing this. And oh, you won't understand computers because you were born in the 1800s. But I'm doing this and, and this is the problem and this is why it's not working. And it was just taking that moment to think about what I was doing and why it might be going wrong and just to vocalize that was a really great way to get me over any problems that I was having. And I would say, actually, with all due respect to my living collaborators, the collaboration that I have with Gauss has definitely been one of the best ones that I've ever had. And so much so that uh, I actually named my son after him when, when he was born. The last time people saw me, I was doing my viva. <laughs> That's strange to think. There was a bit of sort of getting the thesis finished. So I was here for a few more months. And then I got offered a job at the Max Planck Institute in Germany, um, which is you know, a very sought after thing. I've seen every possible pattern that's going to come up on the screen. So I'm just sitting there, it's just me and my fingers rattling the keyboard. So I went to work for the fantastically titled Max Planck Institute for Dynamics and Self-Organization. I was there doing science. We were working on very similar, we've been collaborating with them on the granular work anyway. So we're doing very similar work and helping setting up a group which was in quite its early stages there. What I didn't know, I mean, I, I took this job on spec. It, was, it sounded exciting, going to work for the Max Planck. But it's in a little town called Göttingen in the middle of Germany. And Göttingen is the most inspiring place I have ever been. As a physicist, it's heaven. And so we got there and we discovered that all of the heroes of, well, not all, but a huge number of the heroes of physicists have been in Göttingen. I lived in a house which was five doors down from Max Planck's old house. And it was seven doors down from, from Werner Heisenberg's old house. And Weil, who nobody will have heard of, was just around the corner. And von Neumann was there. And actually, as you walk into the Max Planck Institute, there's a plaque on the wall with the name of, get this, 45 Nobel Prize winners who have worked there. I mean, it's unbelievable. And you stand there looking at this plaque and looking at the tombs of these great scientists as they're dotted around the city. And it really, it, it calls on you to do your best possible work. And it was, it was great. I loved it. You're standing there and you're in the same building as these, where these people did their great work, mostly in quantum mechanics, some in turbulence and similar. And you think, yeah, I want to, I want to be like that. I want to live up to the great name of this institute. And yeah, it really, it really called me to, to, to be my best. I did GCSE German at, uh, at school, and I was terrible at it, and nobody ever told me I would live in Germany. And so I never really tried, I have to be honest. I mean, it wasn't something that interested or excited me. It was just something that I did because, frankly, my mum told me to. And then suddenly I'm in Germany, and I, you know, there's these fantastic ice cream parlors, and I don't even know how to order an ice cream. And I've forgotten again. I, have, I was just wondering whether I can recall the German, and I can't. That's, that's shocking. The Max Planck Institute itself is an incredibly um, cosmopolitan place. There's people from all over the world. I worked with Chinese people and with uh, people from Taiwan and Germany, of course, and Italy and France and Israel. And so you never really felt like you were in Germany working in the Max Planck Institute it feels like you're just in physics heaven, and that, that could be anywhere. And all of the physics is done, no, it's not fair, but the, predominantly the physics is done there in English, and the discussions are had in English. Either that or maths, you know, both languages uh, are, are used equally. What happened? Uh, we worked really hard. Um, we came up with a couple of really interesting observations. Um, I'm really looking forward to telling you about one of them. Yeah, I think we did do some quite, quite amazing science. And we carried on collaborating with this laboratory in Nottingham. That was incredibly productive. There was a, a tension, not a bad tension. I don't mean that in a bad way. But there was a tension between Nottingham and, and Göttingen, which really forced us to, to distill our ideas down to their very essence and get them absolutely right. And I would say that that collaboration which is still going on, it's just I'm, I'm no longer in Germany, but the collaboration was, was enormously productive. So going to Germany was never a job for life. 
Um, it was always going to be two years with the possibility of being three. After 18 months, we had a baby. He's gorgeous. We wanted to be closer to family, and so we came back to England. And I carried on, actually, working remotely. Um, I worked most of my contract uh, for the two years working remotely from England, um, which was a real privilege. I, I was very fortunate that the Max Planck Institute allowed me to do that. But I think, essentially, it was because we had a tiger by the tail. You know, we were doing this great work, and we wanted to try and get that work finished, and everybody had a vested interest in getting that work finished. And so, and so I pushed on from home, and... and uh, and that was quite a productive time for me. Yes, yeah, so, so we came back to England in 2014. Wow, uh, time flies. And I was offered an opportunity to work with a group doing artificial intelligence, specifically looking at how to instill creativity in an artificial intelligence, right? Which is, a, it's a fundamentally, it's a very interesting question. And the guy I was working with, he's done really cool stuff before. And look up the painting fool, it's beautiful. And they wanted me essentially as a programmer. It's not a natural progression for me to go from shaking sand in a box to programming artificial intelligence. And I don't know anything about artificial intelligence. Let me put that right up front. Um, but I am quite a good programmer. I know quite a bit about computers. And I was hired as a programmer, essentially. Uh, and it seemed like it was very close to where we were living. It, it was a convenient job. And it sounded, some, like, it sounded like something that I'd be able to get my teeth into. So I was quite excited about doing that. But I have to be brutally honest, and that is that I am really inspired by this work that I do in far from equilibrium thermodynamics. Right? It's, I've been doing it seven years. I love it. I understand it. It's what I'm qualified for, of course. But I think we're asking great questions, and I want to be a part of answering those questions. And so I've then been working hard since, since that work to get myself back into doing physics. So after six months doing that, it, it, it clearly it wasn't what was going to inspire me going forwards. And so I, I, I left, and um, I think that was the right choice. Since then, I've been back doing physics. I've been doing a little bit of work consulting just to pay the bills. Um, and we've been working with permanent magnets. Now, permanent magnets are, oh, they're a thing. I mean, permanent magnets are black magic when it comes to physics. We, we understand how they work. We can write down the equations, but somehow the physical reality, when you put a magnet in front of somebody, it's, it's difficult stuff. It's not my field of physics. Um, I'm enjoying the, the diversion, but I'm definitely working hard to get back to working on the stuff which is my passion. There's tons of students who want to do PhDs, and there's not that many PhDs to be had. And then there's tons of people with PhDs who want to do postdocs, and there aren't that many. And then you get your postdoc, and you find that the job that you really want is your professor's job, but he's still alive. So it really is difficult to make that transition from the postdoc into the permanent job. Now, the reality is that I am, for me, my reality is that I am entirely inspired by doing the science. I will happily be a postdoc forevermore, but I don't need to spend my life writing funding applications and doing all of the, the sort of peripheral stuff that goes with being a senior academic. What I want to do is science. I want to be here in this lab getting my hands dirty doing science. And the pay for that, I mean, it's, it doesn't set the world on fire, but it's enough for me to survive and it's enough for my family. Fundamentally, I am not a happy person, right? I'm always slightly itchy and I always want to, I'm always slightly discontent with the answers that we have and I want to find the next answer and the next answer and so it's very difficult for me to get to a happy place because when I get there I find that there's another question that needs to be answered and so happy is not the right word but I'm very very satisfied with what I've done and the contribution that I've made so far and I mean one of the great joys of physics is that the more I learn and the more that we as a group learn the more questions that we see on the horizon and the more things, well, we really must go and answer that question sometime. And so, yeah, happiness doesn't come into it. But I am very satisfied and, and I'm very excited about doing more of, of what we've been doing. We've measured this surface tension. I've got a beautiful graph where we can actually see the difference between the forces pulled this way and the forces pulled this way, just like the paperclip.